Last week, an assembly from the United Nations gathered in Nairobi to discuss climate engineering. They simply failed to come to any conclusions and made no recommendations as to whether we should research it or ban it or just do it. So much about politics. But good thing you have me, because I have no hesitations to offer recommendations. I think climate engineering is a bad idea, but we'll do it anyway because it's the cheapest way to get us out of this unfolding climate disaster. The question is just, how do we do it? This week, I have two new papers about climate engineering that I want to tell you about. In one, climate scientists have said basically that we better start soon with stratospheric aerosol injections. In the other, they have discussed a new method of climate engineering. Let's have a look. Climate engineering, sometimes called geoengineering, is the deliberate tempering with Earth's climate in the hope of improving human well-being. The most discussed option is stratospheric aerosol injections. That's the idea of spraying tiny particles, that's the aerosols, into a layer of the upper atmosphere called stratosphere. The particles could be brought there by aeroplanes or balloons and would reflect some of the sunlight that we get. If you do it that high up, then the particles won't just drop down but stay there for a couple of years. We know that this does indeed counteract the warming effect from carbon dioxide increase because volcano eruptions sometimes blast ash into the stratosphere and that does indeed have a cooling effect. Usually the particles that one considers are made of sulfur dioxide. Estimates say it would take about 10 to 15 million tons per year to counteract the entire warming that we have caused. What makes this idea so appealing is that it's cheap. An estimate from 2020 says that the cost would be as little as $30 billion per year globally. Just in case this isn't exactly your idea of cheap, for context, that's roughly how much Americans spend each year on pet food. The issue is that bringing down the temperature by reducing sunlight does nothing to fix the underlying problem, which is the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The carbon dioxide has other consequences, such as ocean acidification, and if the aerosols get washed out of the stratosphere, the warming will very suddenly return, a problem that's been dubbed termination shock. Besides, these particles don't just reflect light that comes from the sun back into space, they also reflect light from Earth back onto Earth. To make matters more complicated, depending on when and where you inject the particles, you'll change wind and precipitation patterns, potentially globally. In the new paper, the scientists now point out there's another problem. Global warming is causing a slowing of ocean currents because their circulation relies on water being cold enough in some areas. I discussed this in detail in an earlier episode. If these currents stop, that will significantly alter the global distribution of warm water and without the circulation of warm air. Middle and Northern Europe, for example, would become several degrees colder on average, while Southern Europe would become even warmer. But the effects would be felt globally. It would also affect a lot of marine animals. That some ocean circulations could stop is one of the climate tipping points that once we've crossed them can't be undone, even if temperatures go back down. The authors of the new study now put some numbers behind that. They say that because the ocean temperatures take so long to adjust to air temperatures, if we wait with stratospheric aerosol injections until global warming has reached 4 degrees or so, we'll not undo the damage to the ocean. The message of the paper is clear, we need to start soon. Or as Daniele Visioni, a climate scientist at Cornell University put it, we can't kick the can down the road forever. The other recent paper that I want to briefly mention discusses a new method of climate engineering, which is to remove water vapor from the stratosphere. Water vapor is a greenhouse gas. We normally don't talk about it because we can't directly influence the water vapor content of the atmosphere. It's determined by thermodynamic equilibrium with the oceans. And there's so much water on our planet that human activity basically makes no difference. However, that's only the case for the lowest layer of the atmosphere, which is very well mixed. 
These researchers point out that water up in the stratosphere gets there through rather localized channels in certain parts of the world and then stays up there for a long time. If one seeds clouds in these regions with the channels, then that would decrease the water vapor content in the stratosphere and reduce its warming effects. They call this method intentional stratospheric dehydration. Sounds like a nice idea, but they crunched the numbers and found that the effect would be rather small. It could decrease the entire warming effect by about 1-2% to of the total we've caused. So good that they looked at it, but not much bang for the buck, and aerosol injections remains the winner. It's a risky idea that can have unintended consequences. Some environmentalists also argue that climate engineering will just give people an excuse to continue pumping out more carbon dioxide and ultimately make things worse. I think in the end all this talk about risks and incentives won't matter a bit because of course the solution that we'll take is the cheapest one and since we still haven't put a price on carbon that'll be stratospheric aerosol injections. And that brings me back to this UN meeting which didn't conclude anything. The obvious thing to conclude is that we need more research on the risks of climate engineering and we urgently need to come up with a legally binding treaty in which nations agree that if we do stratospheric aerosol injections, we'll still try to reach net zero. Why do these young people have to make it so complicated? All they need to do is watch my channel. Okay, so climate engineering is inexpensive, but a bad idea. Isn't there something we can do that's both inexpensive and a good idea? Yes, you could support my friends at Planet Wild. Planet Wild is a bottom-up approach to nature preservation. It's a group of people who go on missions to restore ecosystems and they finance themselves from community contributions. I joined Planet Wild last year and it's been a pleasure seeing them put my contributions to good use. They make a video about each of their missions which you can watch here on YouTube or on their app. It's great not just because it tells me what they did but also because they're very well done videos. Actually, honestly, they're better than my videos. This one, for example, is about their latest mission in the Scottish Highlands to restore the beauty and biodiversity of forests there. They do it rather counterintuitively by tearing down trees. And not just do I get to see environmental action while it's happening, it's actually taught me a lot about forests. Also, now I want to go to Scotland. So why not join me and Planet Wild and make this world a little bit better one mission at a time for a slip little as six dollars a month. And don't worry that you'll get stuck with them. You can cancel your membership each month. If you're among the first 200 people signing up with the code ZABINE3, I'll cover the first month. So don't hesitate. Go and have a look. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.